having less stuff will absolutely change your life. I can confidently say that because it's changed mine. In fact, I just had to make that mess uh, for this intro and clean that up. Right now, I wanna give you 12 simple rules that have helped me own less crap and can hopefully help you as well. First, if you're not quite convinced, you should check out these reasons why you should own less stuff. You can pause if you wanna see them. But now, rule number one, keep what you actually want. First off, it's not just about getting rid of things, right? It's about understanding and focusing on keeping things that actually spark joy in your life and are essential to you. Not having the least amount of things possible that you can count and keep track of. It's about structuring your life and your possessions in ways that actually improve it. If you look at Marie Kondo, she has this idea of things that spark joy, where you go around your house and with each thing that you pick up, you ask, does this spark joy? Do I have a positive emotional response to this thing? Then there is this concept of essentialism. This is where you only keep things that serves a purpose. It's this idea of less but better, where you want everything in your life and every possession that you have to be something that you actually need and makes your life easier or better in some way. This is our donation bin. So as you're sorting through your possessions, ask yourself a couple of questions. Does this item bring me joy? Have I used it in the last six months or the last year? Is it essential to my daily life? Does it make me happy or make my life easier? Or does it make me money? If the answer to any of those questions is no, then it's probably time to let go of those things. You wanna remember that everything that you own should support your current and future goals and lifestyle, and not just be stuff that you have because you wanted it at some point in the past. The one in at least one out method. This rule is really simple, but also super effective for once you get your home to a place where you want it to stay, or you just want like less crap coming into your house, you apply this rule that when you bring something into your house, something else has to go out of your house. It is simple, but it really, really works. You buy a book, you get rid of a book. You buy a cup or a new shirt or whatever, and you have to get rid of something else. And when you do that, it makes buying things much more important because you know it's gonna cost you something in return. There's not only the monetary exchange, but you're gonna have to find something in your house to get rid of. You end up buying less stuff, you have less crap in your home, you're welcome. Don't lose your crap. Okay, so this doesn't actually help you own less stuff, but it does help give you some peace of mind and stay organized digitally. How I do this is using uh, something called 1Password. I've been using this for years. It's a complete game changer as far as like security and simplifying things go. And that's why I have partnered with them to sponsor this video. I literally used to have one password that went to everything that I had online. It, I, I was so dumb. It turns out there's people in black hoods who are trying to steal your stuff. And if they get into one thing and everything else is the same password, they get into everything. Not good. So over a year ago, somebody recommended that I start using one password to protect myself and my family and, and my business. And I gotta tell you, Uncle Kevin, you were so right. Now you might be thinking, oh, why don't I just use like Google Password Manager or Keychain? It's because if somebody hacked your Google account, they get all of your crap. However, if they hack one password, um, they can't actually see your stuff. So they just get like a blob of encrypted information and they'd like, it would take like a thousand years to be able to uncode all of your passwords. And so you just have to make one strong password that maybe gets written down on a piece of paper and puts in the safe so you don't forget it. And then you can keep everything secure. When you sign up for a new account, it generates this ginormous password, automatically saves it. Then you can protect all your logins, your credit cards, your secure passwords, your secure notes. You can do it across multiple different devices, so Mac, PC, phone, Android. Right now, they're offering my audience 25% off individual and family plans. Click the link in the description. You can sign up and get a free trial. Honestly, I am such a big fan of this. I've been using it for a really long time. Don't let the guys in hoods get you. Check out 1Password. Let's get back to it. Take care of your stuff. This applies to so many things. If you look at the big things like your car, investing time, energy, money into keeping it clean, repairing things before they break, just trying to be really cautious with it. When you go to sell it in the future, it'll have more value and end up saving you a decent amount of money. The same thing can happen with phones where instead of always getting the new upgrade, wanting to have the newest piece of technology, just use whatever phone you have until it literally doesn't work anymore can save you a lot of money and in turn help you buy less stuff. Whether that's literally washing your clothes differently so that they last longer, repairing shoes and pants instead of just replacing them, whether it's something cheap, which we kind of have this mindset of, well, it was cheap, I'll just get a new one, it's not a big deal. Or whether it was something expensive, just take care of your stuff. Practice intentional shopping. This will help you really bring less stuff into your home when you ask these couple of questions. Was this a planned purchase or is it just an impulse buy? Would I pay full price for this item or am I just buying it 
because it's on sale. Will my life change at all if I do not buy this thing? And is that change worth the money? Do I have a space where I know this thing will go? Or is it just gonna land on my kitchen table and be super annoying and then I won't get rid of it and it'll just sit there for days and weeks until I finally decide where it goes and then I don't actually end up using it. How often am I gonna use this thing? If it's something that you're not gonna use all that often, maybe see if you can borrow it from a friend or buy it at a thrift store and then donate it afterwards. More stuff isn't always the answer. Curate your home. A lot of times when we go to buy stuff, we will have this ideal self in mind. It's this idea of what we want our house to look like, what we want our life to look like, but maybe it doesn't actually look like that. For instance, I used to have a leather couch that was given to me for a work project. Now that we have two kids, um, we realize that while this looks cool, it is not a functional member of our household. So for the first time ever, we bought a new piece of furniture, this couch. Well, this might not be as aesthetic as our other one was. As a now family with a toddler who likes to climb on things, this is way more functional for our home. So every time you're buying something, you gotta ask, is this something that I, I want my life to be like, or is this something that my actual life is like? We have to make a lot of different decisions now that we have kids on things that aren't necessarily what we want our house to look like, but they serve our family the best. Make decluttering a habit. Decluttering and kind of going down this journey of minimalism is not a one-time thing. You don't do it for a weekend and then never worried about it again. It's important to constantly once a month, once every couple months, go through and declutter stuff in your house. Keep a box around, do whatever it takes but continually get rid of stuff slowly so that it doesn't build up and stress you out and then you freak out. Make it part of your daily routine so when you see stuff that you haven't used in a while, you instantly get rid of it so that it doesn't clutter up your life. By the way, if you've been enjoying this and getting any value, it would mean a ton if you would subscribe. It's totally free and I won't clutter up your inbox. Avoid backup clutter, which is the common trap of the frugalist or frugal people. What are they called? Frugalist? Frugler? frugal person. I don't know. If you're anything like me and you're really into saving money, then this can be a huge trap that you fall into where you keep that backup pair of shoes just in case your feet grow. You keep the extra mugs that you bought at a thrift store in case 17 people happen to come over. You keep the shirts and the pants in case you go up or down in size. You have all this backup stuff for just in case X, Y, or Z happens. You probably know what those things are that you have, whether it's in your kitchen or your closet. So you gotta ask yourself, have I used this thing in the last year? Has that just in case thing, that backup plan actually happened in the last year? And if not, it might be time to get rid of that thing or like a lot of stuff. I don't know how much you have. Find your uniform. Both me and Meredith have been doing this over the past couple of years. So we actually just consolidated closets because we got rid of so much stuff. So eventually I will actually organize and keep all my gear here. But in the meantime, most people wear 20% of their clothes, 80% of the time. And this can literally save you thousands of dollars to find what that 20% is for you and then not buy the other 80% of crap that you just impulse buy constantly. For me, I wear these cut shirts pretty much every single day. I mostly just wear black now because you can't see when you like spill coffee on it and stuff. For pants, I found a pair of jeans that fit me really well. Everybody's gonna be different. Not everybody wants to wear just all black all the time. But if you have a problem shopping, next time you go to pick out your clothes in the closet, see which ones you're skipping past constantly and just try to curate the ones that you actually enjoy wearing. That way, every time you grab clothes, it's your favorite clothes. I'm also wearing a Cuts hoodie. If you guys do wanna check them out, there's a link in the description with 15% off. I really enjoy them. They're super high quality and I never really have to replace them. Not a sponsor, but I really enjoy them. Uh, there's an affiliate link down below. You guys can check it out. Anyways, experiences over stuff. Oof, that was not a good idea. This has literally changed every holiday and gift giving in general in most of my family, where we have been focusing on giving experiences over stuff and even for ourselves investing in experiences over stuff. Because personally, we remember going out and spending time with friends or family way more than having an extra sweater or like whatever you randomly get people as a gift. And if it is going to be a gift, it should be a gift that gives experiences. Like my wife gave me a pizza oven a couple of years ago and that has given us a lot of pizza parties and great memories. Instead of doing jewelry or whatever for different anniversaries and birthdays, we go on a little trip or we go out somewhere locally. We'll spend a night in, we'll do pottery together. We'll do things that aren't just a thing. It is time together to enjoy each other, to get to know each other better, to have a laugh. I think for me, if I look back over the most important moments of my life, they weren't when I got stuff. They were when I spent time with the people that I care about. Keep a wish list and then check it twice and ask yourself, were you naughty or nice? 
No, we should, I should, I, I gotta edit that out. Most of the best purchases of my life have come from delayed gratification. And that's from this habit that's turned into a rule of keeping things on a wish list. When I wanna buy something on Amazon or any store online, I just put it in the cart and then I think about it for three days and then I think about it for 30 days and then I totally forget that I was ever gonna buy that thing and it doesn't end up in my house. Or I write it down on my calendar, ask my wife's opinion, ask a friend's opinion, and instead of instantly buying stuff but just practice this, I can buy it tonight, I can buy it tomorrow, I can buy it next week. That will literally stop you from buying like half the stuff that you buy online. Regularly review the stuff that you have. The more often you review the stuff that you own and ask, have I used this thing in the past six months or a year, or does this still you know, bring value to my life? You will start to realize how little stuff actually improves your life. And you'll start to like train your brain to not want stuff as much. If you're constantly decluttering stuff and asking that question of, you know, does this bring me joy? You will train your brain to realize the things that truly matter and uh, the fake things that, I don't know how I got this, that that were given to you on, on a set like two years ago and you just haven't gotten rid of because you've been thinking about getting a real plant, but you never actually got the real plant because then you'd have to water it, but it's cool background. I still struggle with a lot of this, guys. If you enjoyed this video, then YouTube believes that you will like this video, so. So give it a click. It's a pretty good one, if I do say so myself. I assume so anyways, and thanks for watching.